Hello, everybody. Welcome back. This is The Edge of Adventure. My name is Adam Asher. It's always a privilege, always a pleasure to introduce you to amazing people doing amazing things around the globe, serving others, serving people who are often otherwise overlooked. And today, I have the this great opportunity, this privilege to introduce you to Birthing Kit Foundation based in Australia. And I have uh, joining me from this wonderful organization that we're going to get to know today. I have Kate O'Fatherty and Mercy Olo. Ladies, welcome to the program. Hi, Adam. Thank you for it's great to have you on the show. And I hope I'm pronouncing the names something close to correct. But uh, Kate and Mercy, well. it's it's wonderful to have you on the show. Thanks for the work you do at Birthing Kit Foundation Australia. And for starters, put this into perspective for us. At Birthing Kit Foundation, you all are providing what to whom? Well, like we'll start very broadly, and that is our vision, a world in which all women have access to a clean and safe birth. And we aim to do that by providing clean birth kits and running health education programs in developing countries. So as you mentioned, in terms of context, around 295,000 women die every year during pregnancy and childbirth from preventable causes. So that's what drives us. There are also a further 2.5 million babies who die within the first four weeks of life. So what we aim to do is reduce maternal and infant mortality rates in developing countries in particular. And our clean birth kit has six simple objects within it. One is a piece of soap to wash the birth attendant's hands, plastic sheet to provide a hygienic surface for the birthing experience, gloves to cover birth, birth attendant's hands, gauze to wipe the newborn baby's eyes and the mother's perineum, cord ties for the umbilical cord and a sterile blade to cut it. That's the simplicity of our product and what we aim to do. Again, this is The Edge of Adventure and we're getting to know Birthing Kit Foundation Australia and a couple of ladies who are joining us today from this wonderful organization uh, from Adelaide, Australia today. Kate and Mercy, again, thank you so much for being here today and thank you for what you do. Again, I, I tend to kind of zoom out and think about the, the put, to put things in a context, think about the scenario. So many of us in the world today, so many of us who are listening to this podcast or watching it might take the birthing process relatively for granted. I mean, I think most of us always know that that there is a risk and that it is a potentially dangerous situation. I mean, of course, it happens all the time, but it's something that in in many countries, we really take certain things for granted. And then you guys step in to provide that same sort of security to women in parts of the world who might not have that same level of security. So I'll ask Mercy, I guess I'll um, toss this question to her. You guys can, um, you guys can debate on who gets what question. Um, but when you, when you think about this, it help, help those of us who maybe have taken it for granted, help us understand the dangers or the unnecessary risks that are being run in some of these areas where you guys serve and help so much so we actually um currently work with 37 partners and they're basically uh working around the globe so we're in today we're basically in um 14 different countries and that's across african countries southeast asia and the pacific and these are countries where um Sometimes, you know, there's no, in remote places, there's no access to hospitals, there's no access to clinics. So the women are forced, are like forced to walk for days before they can actually be able to get to a birthing center. And it can be quite difficult. And we, you know, we hear stories on a daily basis that, you know, there's challenges, even there's challenges around transportation. And sometimes the women, you know, end up giving birth on the road or they end up even 
um, you know, be, you know, dying and losing their lives because they are unable to get to a clinic. They are unable to get to um, somewhere where they can be able to, you know, give birth. So the clean, you know, the the small, this tangible product, the birth kit, yeah. um, gives them the ability to at least have basic resources to, you know have that, like if they're in an emergency situation, at least they can be able to give birth in a clean environment with, you know, sterile um, blade, there's, you know, gloves for midwives or the traditional birthing attendants who are supporting the birth. Um, you know, there's soap, there is gauze to ensure that, you know, there's a clean environment in that sort of emergency situation in a place where they don't have access to any resources. So, it does make a huge difference. And the 2.4 million speaks to that. You know, the need is still high um, around the globe. And, you know, every single day we get requests from so many different partners who want to join in and, you know, receive the free kits. And we do as much as possible take in um, as many partners as we can on an annual basis. And, you know, it's, an, yeah. it's amazing what we're doing. Just, just to add to that, in terms of risky pregnancies and the health education programs that we run with our field partners, um, I've had some babies, I've had three of them. Mine were uncomplicated pregnancies and deliveries, so I was really, really lucky. Um, but I have friends who have actually hemorrhaged post-birth and um, if they weren't in a safe environment such as a hospital, they probably would have died. And so one of the things that we help with is providing funding for the health education programs that would allow a, a traditional birth attendant or midwife to teach women and other community members about risky pregnancies and when it's really, really important to get to hospital or a healthcare clinic. Um, and I think that's a vital part of, of what we do also. This is The Edge of Adventure, and we're talking today with Kate and Mercy both of whom are joining us from Birthing Kit Foundation in Australia. And of course, as Mercy mentioned a few minutes ago, you guys work in many different countries. You have partners in quite a few regions. I was taking notes as I was doing some research. I saw that you guys work, of course, in Africa. You work in Southeast Asia. You work in the Pacific and perhaps in other locations as well. Why is this product, and it is a product, I mean, it, it, it's this this kit that you all have put together, and why is it so valuable? Why is it so popular that you're getting so many requests? Because again, me, me trying to do a little bit of research as we uh, prepare for uh, interviews here on the Edge of Adventure, I see you guys have been in existence for 22 years, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, 22 years, and the 2.4 million number is the total number of kits, I think, that have been distributed. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, uh, number, but then why is it so popular? Maybe a better way to say it is, how is it so effective? I think that to paint a picture of a woman who might be in a remote village in Africa, for example, or another place within our world, mm -hmm. um, and they may live in a hut where there might be um, just a, a, a bare ground, so not, not a house as we know it, um, and, and lack of access to gloves or soap. Um, so I guess it's essentially that frontline basic healthcare to prevent um, or to create a clean birth environment or hygiene, um, sorry, yes, um, um, a clean birth environment so that, I guess, tetanus, HIV, and other infections aren't contracted at that point. Yeah, key. Yeah, so, so yes. very important. Again, I know you mentioned them, um, but uh, run down the, uh, is it six uh, basic elements that are in these kits? Uh, what, what, again, are the different elements? Sure. So we have a bar of soap for washing the birth attendant's hands and the mother's perineum a plastic sheet for the woman to lie on as they give birth, gloves to cover, cover the birth attendant's hands, gauze to wipe, wipe the newborn baby's eyes, cord ties for the umbilical cord and a sterile blade to cut it. 
So as you can imagine, it's incredibly mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. and, and inexpensive for us to produce. We have a wonderful fundraising base here. So it's less than $5 per kit. That's Australian dollars. So perhaps, well, would that be 350 US? Yes, 350 yeah. around there. <laughs> mm. So it's inexpensive and simple that can be the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's also like, you know, the it's we're able to pack it's tan, you know, portable and, you know, it's, it's a small kit, you know, can fit even in a woman's, um, handbag. you know, handbag where she can, you know, take it around, you know, when she's, you know, during her course of her pregnancy, she can carry it around and in a situation where she isn't able to get to a hospital, um, you know, have that immediate resource to use and ensure that she has a clean and safe birth. looking and sharing some of the pictures too on the video version of the podcast you see your team members you see volunteers most of the support that comes to you at birthing kit foundation australia most of the support comes from where well it's incredible because I think Australians and, and other people within our world um, are very generous. So our fundraising model is essentially, or basically, that people um, raise money within their own community and then organise an assembly day where their com the community members come together and pack these clean birth kits. So at $5 per kit, there's fundraising, assembly days, and then also very generous partners that we have and people that will provide, for example, Mun Global provide the gloves to us for free. And we have other partnerships for other aspects of our kit product. Um, yeah, so basically it's donations from corporates or other people like the Nielsen Foundation, mm -hmm. philanthropic arm, um, assembly days, general donations, and, and our partnerships. Yeah. And the other thing to note, I guess, and this is recent, is that we now sell our birth kits. So there might be a Rotary Club or other organisations that work internationally that may wish to buy our kit for $5 Australian, and they can do that on our website. So it's another fundraising activity for us. bkfa.org.au, and of course, BKFA easy to remember because it stands for Birthing Kit Foundation Australia. Again, that's .org .au for more information. Ladies, what, what are some of the achievements or successes or milestones that you guys have reached that you're proud of? There's quite a lot. You yeah. know, we're able to, um, within the programs department, we're able to work with organizations that have been doing this for a long time. So, you know, it's not just us, the foundations and the field partners um, that are in these developing countries that we're currently working with and making such a huge difference. Um, if I can specifically speak on one, uh, the Afar Pastoralist Development Association in Ethiopia, they've just been working in that region for over 30 years, making a difference in the lives of uh, women and girls. You know, through we've been running an in-country training program alongside them for the last three years. And, you know, the reach has just been incredible, you know, reaching over 100,000 individuals in terms of raising awareness of, um, you know, ensuring that there's, a, you know, educating the communities around um, best practices, uh, a clean birth environment, and also providing education and increasing literacy in the region. Also building capacity to traditional birthing attendants um, and ensuring that they're, um, you know, reducing harm because in some of these, uh, the uh, so, uh, organization is based in Afar, which is, you know, a community that is remote. Um, you know, a lot of the people who live in that community are nomadic and they're constantly moving around, um, you know, so that just raising awareness of issues such as FGM and reducing harm and also best practices around, um, you know, childbirth and also just providing education to traditional birthing attendants because then they go out into their communities and they, you know, empower 
women. They, um, you know, change their, you know, they work to make a difference to um, even change men's perspective on, you know, gender related issues and um, change the perspective of even community leaders. Mm -hmm. So um, we, through them, we're able to do a lot. And I think for an achievement, um, that's just one aspect of an organization that mm. is able to do that on, on the ground. And speaking of those organizations, in terms of milestones, um, we've actually been able to train 10,000 traditional birth, um, birth attendants. So that's a huge achievement. We've supplied over 2.4, nearly 2.5 million birth kits to 30 countries. And we've been around for 22 years. I think it was back in 1995 that Dr. Joy O'Hazy, who's from Adelaide, South Australia, um, went to a conference with the United Nations on women's health. And she spoke to a lady who had seen a, a, a small kit that was used in Nepal for clean birth. And she had an idea that perhaps she could put one together herself. Mm -hmm. She teamed up with, um, or she did some research and found these six key ingredients for the kit and um, teamed up with the Zunta Club here and started fundraising and, and commenced putting together and, um, and sending these kits to the 30 countries that we service. Yeah. That's the voice Thank of you. Kate O'Fatherty. And we also have with us today, Mercy Olo, both of whom are joining us from Adelaide, Australia and Birthing Kit Foundation, Australia as we get to know them, their heart, their mission, and their passion for helping women around the world and the creation and the production of these birthing kits. And it's a very um, unique idea and a very, um, I think I could probably say a simple idea. It's very impactful, but it's a simple, simple mm -hmm. concept. And nearly 2.5 million of these things have been uh, put together and distributed. So that's, that is an amazing achievement. So congratulations, ladies, for, for that and for so much more. You did mention, Mercy, you mentioned, you know, the guys, right? You mentioned the man's yeah. perspective, right? Well, yeah. here we are. You know, we're talking about uh, there's there are a few subjects that uh, guys tend to um, often shy away from. And it's usually because we just kind of don't know what we're talking about. And so we tend to, you know, not um, think about it or talk about it. Mm -hmm. What is our role as guys in in this in this realm in helping to protect the women and helping to get them the education and the training and the the equipment the supplies that they need so that they can go through the birthing process and that it can be a success and it can be beautiful mm -hmm. and prevent some of the unnecessary tragedies that do occur in the world out there. What what's our role as guys in this top tricky one. Yeah, um, yeah, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a, that is a tricky question. Um, but what we tend to see in these communities is that a lot of the women who are using our kids are very young, so they're teenagers, teenagers, so teenage moms. Um, and in some cases, you know, when they tell their um, the fathers of the children that you know they're about to have kids. In a lot of the instances, you know, the the young men are not in the stage where they want to raise children, or their families, um, you know, there's issues between the two families where they just want to not support. Um, so we tend to see that if we couple the the birthing kit with other services, it has an impact. So it's those services that are on the ground, you know, reaching to communities, providing education, encouraging, you know, these young men to also be part of, you know, the pregnancy, also just giving them that education on what goes on for a woman, a young mother, um, you know, educating them also on, you know, antenatal and postnatal care, so that when their um, children are born, they know what to do and even their families know what to do. Um, so it's just having that support of um, these outreach services on the ground and educating men um, makes a huge difference. And it also make, makes a huge difference because it's changing, you know, changing the community and trying to shift 
attitudes. shift mindset, mm-hmm. yeah, and attitudes um, in 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 these places. And we're seeing we're seeing an increase, especially now because of COVID, um, with teenage pregnancies. So that's been a challenge, but you know, our field partners are working really hard to continue the work and continue providing these outreach programs. And that's the voice of Mercy Olo. She's program manager at Birthing Kit Foundation in Australia. And you know what? You know what I think? And I'm sure Kate's going to agree with me on this. Mercy, you are a very effective communicator for this vision. Oh, you are. You. You really are, and you you yeah. you say it very clearly, where even folks like me can understand. <laughs> so that's that's my judge. I feel like if you can get it through to me, then you're a good communicator. Because yeah. um, again, you never know. There's the the world. There's so many different types of organizations, so many great projects, and then helping those of us out here understand what you're doing, the challenges to it, and how we can, in some way come alongside you and be supportive. Those, those things are so important. So thanks for helping to communicate that. Let me ask both of you the following question. And I'll start uh, with Kate. Kate, what drew you to this organization? How long have you been working with them and, and why? It's mm, a pretty good question um, because it is a small organization and it's quite a specific area in which we focus. I think it was when I had my third child, Connor, when he was born, um, it was a bit of a tough delivery. And I just remember thinking the intensity of that birth experience and and I guess being aware of all the risks throughout pregnancy and the actual birth itself, um, I guess gave a laser focus on the fact that I have a huge passion for equality and trying to help others in the world that perhaps aren't as privileged as us here. And I, yeah, I started looking into NGOs here in Adelaide and this one just seemed particularly good at doing a simple thing very well. And I volunteered here and then a few years later started working here. So I've only been working for Birthing Kit Foundation as an employee for one year, but also volunteered prior to that. Um, Yeah, very passionate about the cause. Mercy, now it's your turn. To answer the same question, what drew you and what has kept you at Birthing Kit Foundation Australia? For me, um, it's been just, I was born in Kenya, so um, I know some of the challenges women face in these areas. Um, Moved to Australia in, in 2017. So when I came here, I think it's finding, it's always trying to find that connection to home. And when I you know, saw this organization and was curious about the work they do and the impact they have around the world. And just able to have that connection to places um, like in East Africa where we work and we make a difference. I think that really was what made me, you know, apply and um, start working here. So it's just, and that continuous connection to home, continues working with people, um, who are making a difference, these field partners and these organizations that we work with and the great work they do um, has really been what sort of kept me here. We're talking about Birthing Kit Foundation Australia, a foundation and organization based in Australia and headquarters are there in Adelaide. And we're talking to two of their team members, Mercy and Kate, getting to know what the organization does and their passion and love for women everywhere, women who perhaps, um, you know, could be facing a difficult um, situation, difficult childbirth, and to help to ease that both through education and through these birthing kits is a fantastic project. It's a fantastic um, initiative. And um, as I... um, you know, think about all that you guys do. And as I learn here and appreciate what you guys are doing, just want to um, commend you, but also ask you to personalize this a little bit for the audience and for me. Who are we helping when someone comes alongside Birthing Kit Foundation, whether they're given their money or they go and help to put these kits together, which you've put together quite a few, and I know you have quite a few amazing volunteers who help you get that done. 
who are we helping? Who are we helping when we do that? Um, just, it, I know you're speaking in generalities here, but paint the picture. What is, what is the mother facing that, uh, that you're reaching out to? Um, maybe if I can just share a story from the field. Um, a lady, Fatima, um, who reported back to us that she had a complicated um, pregnancy with her second set of twins. And it was because of our work and training the birth attendant where she lived and the fact that that birth attendant ensured that she went to a healthcare facility as opposed to giving birth at home enabled her, in fact, once she'd spoken to the sheikh, the community um, leader where she lives, and negotiated that actually it was possible for her to travel for I think it was six to eight hours um, to a healthcare facility for delivery, that essentially enabled her to have two healthy babies. And I mean, it's it's stories like that that allow you to stay focused and very passionate about our cause, which is to enable safe and clean childbirth and pregnancy experiences for as many women as we can around the world. Um, yeah, is there anything to add to the you, Lassie? You're also helping, you know, um, traditional birthing attendants who are in these villages mm -hmm. who um, may not necessarily always have resources, especially when they're going out into the field, when they're helping out with childbirth and during that labor time. So you're providing a clean environment, not only for the mother, but for them as well and yes. for the child. And you're also helping with um, education around, you know, um, best practices to use and in some instances also providing increasing their education, increasing literacy for these um, traditional birth attendants. Uh, you're empowering them to be able to go back into their communities to um, have a voice not only for themselves but for young women and girls and also for um, you know other individuals, families within the communities and they're able to make a difference. Um, in the work that they do on a daily basis. Ladies, what would you say is the greatest challenge that you face, this initiative, this organization faces? Greatest challenge, greatest need? There are challenges. Yeah. I guess in a COVID world, distribution is a huge hurdle at the moment. There are some countries that we can't physically get our kits into and some of these are the countries that perhaps need them the most. Um, I think that's our largest challenge at the moment, distribution. And also for any organisation, especially organisations that are working within this humanitarian space, um, you know, funding is always a need. So to be able to just continuously receive support, especially now with COVID-related um, challenges that I know a lot of people are having. Um, so to just continue continuously have that ongoing um, support from individuals um, can be a challenge in some instances, but we're thankful and grateful to all our supporters mm. and who are uh, on board right now and we're always looking and in need um, to just have more people come support us and even people from around the world. Yeah. We're speaking today with Mercy and Kate, both of whom are joining us from Birthing Kit Foundation in Australia. Ladies, uh, greatest joy. What do you love most about what you do? Um. Probably it's receiving stories from the field, mm -hmm. happy stories of babies being delivered, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I guess being part of other people's journeys, um, childbirth. I mean, it's the most joyful experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, the, definitely the greatest, um, just to add on to what Kate has mentioned, is the stories that we get from the field, um, mm. the pictures that we get from the field, you know, seeing children who... You know, if we go back now, we're birthed with the kids and now they're getting older and they're able to walk, they're running around. That just makes us very happy. And, you know, these videos, these 
photos, their stories um, are just incredible. Ladies, you know, I mentioned thinking about the listenership or the viewership of this podcast and, of course, sort of framed some things a while back, thinking about all the many people who listen from either in Europe or in the United States of America, Australia, um, and, and sort of thinking about you know their life and their perspective. And then it's good sometimes, and it's important to, to remember that our perspective and our experience is not the only perspective or the only experience that exists in the world. And, and I think that's one of the things about what you do that's so important. And, and it, it's a reminder today that in this regard, there are a lot of things that we take for granted when it comes to healthcare, uh, the birthing process and those things. We, many of us have been able to take those things for granted and, and so many in the world are not in a position to do so. But I also want to say, and the, the thought comes to mind, that as I see, when I get the reports from the podcast and I see the different parts of the world, when you, you know, hear some shop talk, as they say, when you talk about podcasts, it doesn't tell me who listens, it, but it does tell me what parts of the world people are listening in. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's great to know that. And sometimes it's, it's, it's very intriguing. I will tell you that I have quite a few faithful listeners in throughout um, the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you have a heart for, for Africa. And of course, we've focused on Africa in the past. And, and um, every once in a while, I get these reports back that say that uh, whether it's in Egypt or Uganda, and I'm blanking on the other, there was another country recently where I get the report back that says that the Edge of Adventure was one of the most listened to podcasts in that country for, you know, period of whatever the time was. And I find that intriguing. So having said all of that, which I just, I think is, is super wonderful. So if you're listening to this in Africa, I am so thankful for you. It is so good to have you part of this family and this thing we call the edge of adventure. But I would like you ladies to speak to, to the ladies or, or that, that might be listening in Africa and what did they need to hear today? What would you tell them um, in relation to all that you guys do? Mm. Really uh, good question. <laughs> maybe we should talk about the innovation challenge. <laughs> yeah, um, if I can maybe just speak for um, to women in Africa. I come from Kenya. Maybe I'm, I think I mentioned that earlier on and just want to give a shout out to my Kenyan sisters. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, we're with the work that we do. Um, the most important thing also is around education. And if I can just encourage um, young girls to, you know, continue striving to go and to school or going back to school, even after having children, if they can, if they have, you know, access to getting education, um, you know, learning, continuously learning, I think that's something that is important because I think when we see women um, get empowered through education, we do see communities change. We also see um, livelihoods change because they have, they're able to make a difference for themselves, their children, um, and their families and their community in general. Mm. Well, the parts of Africa that I've visited are Kenya. Yeah. I studied yeah. in Kenya for a while and also Tanzania, two wonderfully beautiful parts of the earth. So thank you for having me, number one. Number two, we ran an innovation challenge last year mm -hmm. and um, the lady called Jacqueline Rogers, who works from South Africa, has uh, launched an app called My Pregnancy Journey, and that might be something to look up. So just a shout out for the My Pregnancy Journey app. Um, mm -hmm. It's either free or extremely inexpensive. Like, um, I think it's free. Yeah, free to and download. Yes, and it's only when you um, add on things, that, yeah, you have to pay. But I think it's free initially, and um, you can access lots of information if you happen to be pregnant or thinking of becoming pregnant or interested in learning about that journey, my pregnancy app, my pregnancy journey app. Well, this is the Edge of Adventure, and we're getting close to wrapping up this edition, a very unique edition of the program, and that's good because unique 
unique is good. And what you guys do, what, what the entire team, all the volunteers and supporters at Birthing Kit Foundation in Australia, what you do is so important. And it's having this impact around the world and from Africa to the Pacific to Southeast Asia. And again, I have a feeling it's going now even beyond that um, with every passing day, more opportunities despite the challenges. And I know there are, know there are some challenges. And, and I also know that you ladies and the team there are, are going to be up to these challenges and you're going to push past them and you're, you're going to get the help uh, needed out to the ladies and the families and the communities that need it so much. Uh, if you're looking at the video version of the podcast, you can see I'm just kind of scrolling through uh, their website. So I encourage you to check out their website. Birthing Kit Foundation Australia can be found online at bkfa.org.au. That's bkfa.org.au. And as always, you can also go to theedgeofadventure.com, look up the uh, podcast post that pertains to this interview and this feature. And we'll have all the links there so you can, can track them down there if you don't have a chance to, to write that down. But it's a wonderful organization doing great things. And I like the simplicity of it. And I like how you've been able to take that simplicity and magnify it and amplify it and take it to so many different parts of the world, to so many different women and communities and you know, I can just imagine the the difference that you all have made across the world. And so thank you for doing that. Thanks for taking the time today to tell us about it. And as we close the program, anything else we should know about Birthing Kit Foundation Australia uh, before we wrap the show? Look, I guess in terms of how others could help or learn more about what we do, mm -hmm. you're welcome to reach out to us via the website info at bkfa.org.au if you'd like to partner with us if you'd like to help us fundraise if you'd like to host an assembly day or learn more about what we do please do reach out just add on you know we're a small team of um five individuals so it's it's really good to see um you know just a small team of five people and six board members uh, who are extremely passionate passionate about um the work that um, gets done in these developing countries. So also just to read up on some of that, some of our successes, there's more stories on our website and also um, social media. Did you say five team members? Yes. It's, yeah, <laughs> we're small. <laughs> no, we're very small. <laughs> well, listen, you're doing such a great job and my heart goes out to you and to all the women that you're helping and have helped through the years. Congratulations. And of course, we we focus on what I like to think of as the unsung heroes out there and so many different things we could think to do with our lives, we could pursue in our lives. And and yet there are so many people, so many people. Here's some good news. And we need some good news these days. There's so many people around the world like you two who have chosen to do something for others and to serve a group of people that might otherwise be forgotten. And that right there is some amazing news. And so in my book, mm -hmm. you two ladies and your entire team are heroes. Keep up the great work. And I know it's not easy. It's got its days where it can be discouraging. But carry on, sisters. It, it You're making a difference. And it's a wonderful thing. So thank you for being on the show today. Thank you, thank Adam. Thank you for having us. Thank you.